What we got now is a colony. But what we want to create is a new nation. My name is Luis Rosa Perez. I'm a former Puerto Rican political prisoner of war. Uh, I was arrested in 1980, uh, along with 10 other uh, compañeras and compañeros, comrades, and accused of being members of the Armed Forces for National Liberation, the FLN, uh, a clandestine political organization that sought the independence of Puerto Rico. Uh, in 1999, I was uh, excarcerated as a result of a long an intensified uh, campaign that won our release and President Clinton admitted that we were sentenced disproportionately and uh, and that we were sentenced on, uh, that we were sentenced under political guidelines uh, this campaign uh, was not only a, a, that not only unified different sectors of the Puerto Rican society but also in the United States other religious sectors uh, uh, and social political organizations and joined internationally. in. And internationally with uh, over 15 Nobel Peace Prize winners that joined the wow. campaign. And they, they joined the campaign for you guys to get out. Right. Yeah, correct. And uh, How many were there were you that got out? At, in 1999, uh, 11 of us were released. Uh, there was, uh, and three, three stood. Uh, and this was from two different groups, uh, because apart from the FLN, 1985, there was also uh, from one of the clandestine organizations in Puerto Rico, uh, the Macheteros. There were several members of their organizations that were that was uh, released in 1999, uh, and subsequently, uh, a couple years later, uh, a couple more came out. Well, you, you but you stipulated that you were a political prisoner of, of war. war. Uh, what? what, what? Can you tell me the distinction between political prisoner and political prisoner of war? Yes, I was a direct uh, militant. I was a, an armed militant of a clandestine organization, and I was captured in in uh, in the process of war of conducting uh, uh, activities against the government of the United States. Uh, uh, I, I was uh, an armed combatant in an anti-colonial war, so our position of prisoner of war was directly tied and uh, associated with the international laws concerning captured combatants. And that's why we refused to recognize any criminal jurisdiction of the United States courts uh, to try us. And we instead uh, advocated for the international tribunal and for the international courts to hear our, hear our case. So your, your, so your stance was that Puerto Rico was a colony that the United States was had was an illegal political power in Puerto Rico. That's correct. Puerto Rico was militarily invaded in 1998. Uh, we were uh, we are to this day militarily occupied, uh, and where at one point there was over 13 of the largest military bases uh, of the United States in Puerto Rico occupying the country. We believe there's a a, a bellicose state. Uh, uh, a state of of uh, of war, uh, not that you see tanks and and uh, and soldiers or troops marching down the streets, but you see a federalized police system uh, where the FBI and the U.S. military are are very much in control. Where you see uh, right now, the the Homeland Security has one of their headquarters in Puerto Rico. Uh, where you see military. Uh, techniques and and Puerto Rico being used as a launching ground to invade other nations like in Guatemala in '65, like in uh, uh, well, the DR Nicaragua, in right? Yes, uh, DR in '65, uh, uh, Nicaragua, even... the the uh, the, uh, the attacks against the Frente Sandinista, uh, which were you know actually right. partic uh, trained in. And, uh, Panama was it Panama in '92? I think it was right. Panama as well. Uh, uh, and uh, where you have elements still today training. Uh, you have uh, uh, in the town of Mayagüez, uh, a big part of land was being, uh, has been bought 
by the Israelis and, and they have uh, supposedly training grounds. There's Black Ops uh, training in, in uh, or Blackwater training in, uh, they were training in Aguadilla and repairing uh, uh, military gunships of the helicopters. Uh, and you have now in, in Utuado uh, uh, paramilitary groups training. Well, a friend of mine told me uh, years ago that 33% uh, of the arable land in Puerto Rico is controlled by the U.S. military. That's correct. Uh, some have been, I can, I've driven the whole north coast of Puerto Rico. Yes. You don't see a farm. Right. And, and most of these lands, are, uh, some have been returned. But right now, for instance, the Saiba was, was uh, closed down. And the U.S. military actually put it up for sale. Uh, and the same thing with, with Savannah Seca and, uh, and, and uh, where some of the uh, lands in Vieques was returned to the Federal Wildlife Preserve. And there's a stipulation in there. If you read the fine print, it says, and, and the United States military can take over these lands from the Federal Wildlife Preserve uh, for the security of the nation, for the security of, of the nation. United States. Right. <laughs> right. And so uh, there's a fine print that, that they can go back. And, and there's actually a, a movement within the military to reopen Vieques for training practices. Uh, Vieques was, was very uh, instrumental uh, to the U.S. military because they trained their latest weaponry uh, without worrying about, you know, uh, 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 environmental or, or, or even human uh, 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 collateral, what they call collateral damage. Uh, well, but they, had, they practice what? Live ammunition they for 200 practiced, days out of the year? That's right. So and, in a lot of ways, people are living on a war zone but not really living in the war. Yes, there's 10,000 inhabitants, 10,000 people living in Vieques. Uh, before Vieques, and Vieques was used for 62 years. Uh, before Vieques, you had Desecheo that was used for 42 years. Uh, and before Desecheo, I mean, uh, Culebra. And then before Culebra, you had Desecheo used for 24 years. So, the, you know, uh, the island of Puerto Rico and, and their, their, the smaller islands uh, have been used for, for live ammunition practices, have been rented out to other countries uh, up till recently, you had in the internet you can find a, 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 an a advertisement saying that you can practice your latest weaponry on the island of Vieques. Wow! So these are things that motivated uh, us to participate in 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 uh, an armed revolutionary uh, movement and clandestine uh, revolutionary movements, and and that have. Uh, even before us, the people who came before us to participate. Uh, How much time did you do in prison? I did 19 years and a few months and uh, and I don't know how many days. I didn't <laughs> keep that much of accurate count. But I was arrested nine, April 4th, 1980. And uh, I came out uh, September 10th, 1999. Uh, those years were spent uh, 16 approximately 16 years in state prisons in Illinois, where I was transferred 22 times among eight different institutions in that in that state. So like eight institutions, 22 times in 16 years? In 16 years. So they just bounced you around from one place to the Yes, next. they call it the circuit. <laughs> they, they, have, they, they give uh, these euphemism. So you were on tour? Euphemism. I was, <laughs> I was a tour. As a matter of fact, look at this. There was a, I used to play softball, and I was also a power lifter in the in the in the prisons, uh, the times that I was in, in segregation. And uh, and the warden, one of the wardens used to come out and, and watch me play baseball. And he used, he used to tell another prisoner that actually told me, he said uh, that if I, I could have been out, I should have been out there throwing baseballs instead of bombs. I would have been a pro, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, but he used to, every time I would get transferred, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, they were exchange another prisoner or two, and he would say, "Oh, we, we're pulling off a trade, a baseball trade, you know." <laughs> <laughs> but but we'll get them back, you know. And, and that's what happened. I would end up in in some prisons. I would, you know, and uh, and within those sixteen years, like in Menard, Menard Illinois, uh, which was down south near Marion, I I was there five times, you know, within that sixteen years. So I would get transferred, and then they would send me back. And uh, 
so they kept bouncing me around they said it was a, uh, a security uh, I was a security concern I had too much influence in the prison because one of the one of the uh, in order for you to survive in those I did not belong to any gang I didn't want to belong to any gang I, did, I wasn't into the vices that that are commonly uh, found in, in prison the drugs the uh, you know the the, the, the sexual uh, market in, inside the 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 prison system so you have to be creative you have to know how to maneuver uh, and you have to become a psychologist and a, and a sociologist at the same time and and get your degree in that in order to maneuver away from from certain conflicts and and in order to make your time more productive uh, Malcolm X said that the, that the, the prison became his university and that's what we wanted to do we wanted to create uh, uh, the, the prisons into another uh, what we call a trinchera or a trench another you know another base of operation right uh, a base of work not necessarily to recruit people but to to maintain uh, that line that discipline uh, that we had as a, as a movement and, and as a as combatants so what we would do and what I did in particular was I established cultural committees inside every prison that I that I went to. The purpose of these cultural committees was to present the prison population that was divided into gangs, especially the Latin American community, uh, that were divided into two main sectors uh, of gangs that were in conflict. Present them with a with a neutral ground, something that ha they can have in common, uh, something where they can celebrate their particular. Uh, historical holidays like the Cinco de Mayo for the Mexicans, like a Grito de Lares for the Puerto Ricans, like a, a, a Grito Jara for the, for, the, for the Cubans. So we presented the, the community, the prison community, with with, a, with a, an alternative, and and we it functioned, it functioned real well. When, when some prisons we we call it the Latin American Cultural Committee, and others we call it the Hispanic Cultural Exchange Committee. We will find names that that was suitable, that was soft for the administration to accept uh, as well. And we would do activities and we would, uh, we would have our own food sometime uh, and, and celebrate our culture.